All right. Welcome back, guys. Uh, not to TFT today. If you're watching this, you're on my second channel. Uh, this is McRathy, and I normally play TFT and a little bit of League of Legends and stuff like that on my main channel. But today, this is going to be the first video in a long time on this channel, uh, which is my McRathy Plays channel. And this is just our dicking around in other games. Today we have Total War Warhammer 3, a game that I have almost zero experience playing. Uh, however, I really like the idea of uh, huge battles and kind of a 4X style uh, map and a sort of conquest map resource, you know, uh, kind of thing, which I'm also not that great at. Things like Civilization and Stellaris, I'm, 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 I'm pretty bad at those. But this is how you get better, is you practice and you play and you learn stuff. I may die quickly, and this might be a very quick playthrough. Um, and in that case, I will try again with a different faction or change some things, and we will do something else. But for now, um, we're just going to dive in. I don't know what race we're going to pick. I have some of the DLCs and some I don't. I think I've been like wanting to play this game for a couple of years Um I, I bought the Warhammer 1 a long time ago when it came out, and I played a tiny bit, and I sucked at it, and I got frustrated, and I left. Or maybe this is when my son or daughter was born or something, and so I, I just got busy. Um, and so now we're going to play Warhammer 3. I bought this and 2, and some of the DLCs, I've been sort of collecting stuff as they've been going on sale. So I don't have everything, but I've got some stuff, so we'll start with what I have. We're going to start a new campaign. Um, the Lost God is the prologue to Realm of Chaos. And uh, the Immortal Empires is the sort of larger sandbox campaign, it says here. The Immortal Empires is a vast sandbox campaign encompassing the entire Warhammer world with open-ended objectives that provide the ultimate Total War Warhammer experience. I don't really know how this game works, and I don't know what I should be going here. I've played this already, The Lost God. I, I, I did this. Um, it was fine. Uh, Story-driven experiences in a focused setting within the Warhammer world. I, I, I kind of think that this would be kind of cool. Because this is more of the story of your race or your, you know, your faction. And I think that's cool. So we're going to go ahead and watch this uh, cinematic. And I will get back with you when it's over. shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him, yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became execution. Single shot, bound in fate forsaken, pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Kiri, where lies Urson now? Is he here in the north? Is he alive? Demon? A master of the dark. I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a 
fool would challenge Belakor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Ursan's blood would break my curse, ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Ursan is locked in the Forge of Souls, deep in the realm of chaos, and I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All rifts have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah, the tome unveils a spell to summon a portal, one to bypass the Maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally, one who is tempted by the power of the God Bear and can withstand the horrors within. All right, interesting. So this is where we're going to be picking our race. Uh, we we do have limited races. We can't pick the stuff that came from. I'm not sure if it's the next DLC or whatever, but it's it's not the sandbox stuff. Uh, we can't play Chaos Doors. I would have loved to play these, um, but we require this DLC and we don't have it. The Demons of Chaos uh, will be kind of cool. The Empire is kind of cool. Grand Cafe is uh, the recommended first campaign. And I might just choose that just for simplicity's sake. I hear that corn is really fun as well, but uh, it's it's a really different kind of play style, I think. And since I've never played this before, I feel like Grand Cafe is good. So we're going to pick that now. Okay. Um, this playthrough is really... I don't know if this is going to be interesting for people who know this game already. This is kind of people who are maybe Warhammer curious. Um, I think personally, um, I think like an investor because I'm an investor. And so I think about what's going to be popular and, you know, where the where the zeitgeist is, is going in the world. And I think that because Henry Cavill has committed himself to the Warhammer universe and he's going to be doing movies and voiceover for games or whatever he's doing for Warhammer, I, I think this is going to become more popular. And... I think it's for a good reason, and I have hope that they're going to make more games that are maybe a little bit more accessible than something like the Total War series, which um, seems to have a very high bar to entry and a high ceiling um, for skill cap, um, which isn't generally my type of game. I'm more of a low barrier to entry, low skill ceiling cap like TFT. This is not that game. This is a lot more micro, a lot more planning and uh i'm not that good at that so if you're not that good at that let's do this together let's dick around in warhammer and probably die early and that's okay we'll do another playthrough and we'll try something different um i actually don't know if i don't know if this is like hardcore where if you like fail your campaign it just deletes your file and you can't start again maybe we can just like start from the last save or something I, I really actually don't know how this works so maybe we'll have lots of choice uh, lots of chances to fix stuff um so yeah this is going to be geared towards people who maybe have a little bit of experience but they're maybe a little bit uh, intimidated by the warhammer franchise um, and it's definitely going to be for people who don't own the game um, the game is quite expensive and all the dlc can make it extremely expensive to to like buy everything is hundreds of dollars or I think there might be a package for like 190 bucks or something crazy like that. So if you're slightly curious about this um, and you want to watch someone play it that also doesn't know what they're doing and maybe is going to hit some of the same pitfalls you do and maybe some of the same problems you do, um, this series might be for you. Um, and like I said, if you're a Warhammer total war expert and you know what you're doing i think this will probably frustrate the shit out of you because i don't know what i'm doing and i'm going to probably do a lot of things bad or you know inefficiently and you're going to be pissed off about it but if you're patient and you do know how to play this game and you would like to help me please let me know in the comments I would like to know what I should be doing. I will release a video of this and then I will not play again until maybe a week or two after that video has released to give you guys time to watch what I've been doing to catch up 
uh, and to maybe um, give me some advice on what I should sort of do next. Um, I'm hoping not to get trolled uh, and someone say something stupid that gets me killed, but I don't know. Maybe you guys are going to troll me and I'll die, and then there'll be no more videos. I don't really know. I'm gonna we're gonna find out. So we're gonna we're gonna start now. But I wanted to give that caveat, and I wanted you guys to understand what this what this sort of series will be about. And this will probably be several series on this game. You know, we're playing as Grand Cafe right now, um, but we may do, you know, several of these. Um, and we, we might do bigger sandbox stuff. We might do smaller campaign stuff. I don't really know. Uh, you, you guys tell me what you'd like to see, and we'll go from there. All right. So, Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, is the recommended first campaign. We also have uh, Miao Ying. Miao? Uh, is that your real name, Miao? Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon. Okay. So, what's your army? Oh, she has a much smaller army. Celestial Dragon Guard. Oh, he's got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of more stuff. Longma Riders. So, obviously this game is absolutely enormous in the scale of its you know units and the makeup of your army and all that kind of stuff i'm not gonna dwell on the little i'm not gonna go through you know every unit and just find out okay wait you know making sure i'm min maxing every i'm not gonna do that these guys are ranged these guys are melee these guys are flying cavalry <laughs> flying cavalry i guess all right then rain rockets um yeah i I'm just going to kind of go with that. Flying War Machine here. Cavalry. Uh, peasant Archers. Dragon co Crossbows. That seems pretty cool. Uh, peasant Long Spearmen. And then Jade Warriors. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we get here. So let's look at the factions. Let's look at this girl first. So Corruption is minus two. That means you have less uh, Corruption Deficit, I guess it is. Um, leadership is plus 10% leadership when fighting against demons of chaos. So that could be pretty useful. Uh, and then 20% of uh, ammunition, 20% ammunition for our all armies, not just the one that this lord is in. Uh, the lord effects upkeep is minus 50% for missile infantry units. So this girl obviously is um, highly skewed towards uh, ranged units uh, because the ammunition is 20% uh, extra ammunition and 50% um, less upkeep which is actually probably pretty huge um, this one here I would love to play but um, I don't have the DLC for this so we're going to move on um, yeah thank you Master of Fire yeah this gives us our unit and the spells uh, we can get so I don't know what that is um, okay so Zhao Ming let's see maximum caravan cargo capacity Caravan cargo capacity? I actually don't know what this is. Is this is there like a trading thing in this game where you can trade stuff? I'm not really sure. Hero recruit rank plus five for alchemists. And then upkeep of minus 25% for ogre mercenary units. Interesting. And armor is plus 15 for melee units. I think plus 15 is actually pretty good. Let's see uh, how many... Yeah, see that doubles the armor of the spearmen... Um, not quite double, obviously, here. That's 70 armor for the Jade Warriors, uh, the Halberds, and the uh, Sword Infantry. Yeah, the Celestial Dragon Guard has 95. So 15 armor is actually pretty significant. Um, and then up, upkeep of 25% for melee units. So this is much more favoring a melee sort of... Um, army and this is the recommended first campaign but that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to pick that I, I kind of like the idea of the infantry uh, sorry the missile infantry I, th I think that's really cool I like playing the um, ranged stuff so let's see is this does this change at all I'm assuming we can get all of these with both of them, right? None of the units are locked behind DLC, which is nice. Um, but the lords... Uh, the lords should be... 
Maybe, oh, maybe it doesn't tell me, actually. This is Yuan Bo. Yeah, he is locked behind the thing, but it doesn't show that. So I actually don't know if these guys are... I don't know if these guys are actually... Oh, this is interesting. You can select a unit, and then whatever you hover over, it'll tell you the difference in stats. So, like, you can see that the Jade Warrior Crossbowmen are dwarfed by the the Grace of Qiyan, or Kui Yin, the Celestial Dragon Crossbows. So you can sort of see what the, you know, what the uh, the bonus is here. So this is, uh, yeah, some different lords and different heroes. So I actually don't know how many of these units are going to be hidden, so to speak, behind, uh, behind the DLC. But I don't think there should be any other than a couple of lords. I, I, I suspect that that's not how this game works, but I, I have been wrong before. Uh, let's take a look at our campaign here. Campaign difficulty, uh, like I'm so tempted to just go easy, just to sort of have a, you know, a fair chance of, at winning and keeping going. I feel like I might be able to change this in between, but I think the campaign, this is... Um, this is the campaign difficulty on the map. The, it's the battle difficulty that I'm actually worried about. Um, poor reaction times, thus making them easier to defeat. Uh, lower reaction times will try and evade spells, offering a reasonable level of challenge. Maybe we'll just leave it on normal. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm the kind of person who would rather have fun and play through the game on easy and just enjoy my whole experience rather than get frustrated with, like certain aspects of the battle but at the same time it has to be somewhat challenging and so i'm okay with normal i know there's like veterans who are playing on very hard very hard i salute you guys you you are much better than me and I, and that's totally fine um oops not 105 10 incremental auto saves uh we're gonna save it to the cloud that's really good iron man mode nope uh, advice frequency, yeah, okay, this is unlimited battle, okay. What what happens when AI stats modifier? Okay, so what happens when the time limit runs out? Do we do we win if we have like more units? I don't know. Um, we're just gonna go with these. I think. Is it? Oh, oh, did I? Oh my gosh, I screwed that up. Okay, let me go do this really quickly. Grand Cafe, we're going to choose this one. Yeah. Um, we were here in settings. My bad. I pressed this thinking we need to go back there, but we don't. So yes, all of these will be fine. We will save this. And let's go do this, guys. Let's start this campaign. I don't know what this looks like. I don't know what we're going to be doing. But this is the guided campaign where we're going to get more of the story and the lore, which I think is fun. I, th I think that there's a lot of, um, there has been a lot of work and a lot of writing and a lot of, you know, content behind the lore and the story and the universe that is Warhammer. I think that's probably its biggest strength, but it's also its biggest barrier to entry, having, you know, someone like me come in with no real knowledge of uh, what's going on can be very intimidating. So hopefully this proves to be fun and not just intimidating. But again, this is kind of for people like me who have never played this and kind of want to want to just see how it, you know, how it looks to play this for someone who doesn't know what they're doing because maybe it's not fun. Maybe I play this and I'm like, dude, this is just not fun. This is frustrating me more than I'm having fun. And then I'm not going to play anymore cuz I want to have fun when I'm playing games. I don't want to be, you know, frustrated. I'm too old for that. I'm 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 not in my 20s where I can you know, play Souls-like games where I get killed 500 times by the same dude. We'll let the cinematic go. You are great. We have no interest in the mere god's power. No interest in power to use against the forces of chaos. I am Yao Yi, the Storm Dragon, older than the gods themselves. You are here for a greater purpose. 
This map shows the energy of all things. There should be harmony, but the world is unbalanced. My younger sister, Shen Tu, bringer of light and hope. She ventured beyond the Northgun Mountains, but was lost. Without her, without her light, darkness prevailed, and our family has no comfort. Though I feel you are lost, the Tome of Fate provides no insight to your sister's whereabouts. Uh, uh, no, he witnessed her fate. Then why does he not tell you? Iron Dragon very good trust between Vago and God. If you save us, you will tell us how to find Shen Tzu. Let me serve you, mighty dragon. I can reach the king, lead you to him before it's too late. For one drop of his blood. Your destiny is to guide us. Armies of Cathay must breach the Maelstrom and march into chaos. Balance will be restored to the world when Shenzu is returned to you. All right, guess that gives us our, you know, yeah, the goals. All right, cool. Cool looking map. There remain brave defenders ever loyal to you. Boast of them, and they will gladly confederate with a revered dragon. You will need such allies, for it is on the other side of the wall where the threat is strongest. The eternal siege continues, for the dark powers are never sated. Oh my Jesus, look at that dude. What is that? Okay, that guy looks fucking awesome. Insidious, and the invasion was only part of his plan. Rebellion festers in Nan Yang's mind under the changer's malign influence. Punishment must be swift to reinforce your authority. Before we can hope to take the fight into the chaos realms themselves, we must bring harmony back to Grand Cafe. There is much to do. Much to do. Okay. Defeat an army belonging to the following faction. The rebel lords of Nanyang. Alright. So it sounds like we have some... What's this guy... Is he our friend? He's purple, so yeah, we're, we're the purple guys. Our friends are green. Uh, so let's, can we merge these guys? Oh, is this a bad guy? How come we can... Oh, this is an enemy. How come he looks purple then? Oh, this is the... Uh... Oh, I see. Okay, so that's the... Um... This must be the quest marker for the quest that I have. Um, so let's let's go attack this dude. He's just standing like right in front of our base. Okay. Oh. Okay. So we can use the auto resolve. We can fight the battle, or we can retreat. Um, 
we will we will do the fight battle because it's the first fight and you might as well even though it would be an easy victory um i, I think it's fun to to do these we can take a look at the map here um in this game in particular the the way that the terrain is arranged is incredibly important um units can be hidden in these tree areas here um oh how come my this is really weird i'm looking at where i'm where my mouse is on the screen is different to where it is on my uh on my overlay that's really strange so yeah, in this area here, they can you know you can hide in trees. Uh, oh, they're on the see they have the high ground, which is really crazy. What's this? Risk magic for more favorable winds. All right, let's do it. Channel that magic, baby. All right, it's rain magic. The winds evade you. All right, cool. So this is good. Okay, so we are going to hide. We're going to hide these guys over here. I want my soldiers in the front to be... Uh, oh, I guess they have to be there. I, I want them to actually be more like this. And I'd, I'd like these guys sort of off to the side as much as I can. Maybe we'll maybe we'll make these really long too. Sort of go like this. Yeah, you want your front line really um, really long. We'll put her up there. We'll put these two here, the crossbowmen. Uh, we actually want them to be uh, pretty much. Actually, we'll grab both of these. We want these guys to be pretty much stacked up as much as we can. This helps them. Uh, we have different kinds of crossbowmen. This is peasant archers and celestial dragon crossbows. Okay, so these are the the bigger guys, the better guys over here. Um, so that's good. We're gonna we're gonna bring these guys right into here, and then this is our flying war machine. Uh, so battle fundamentals. Oh, I didn't mean to. Yeah, we we don't need to do that. That's fine. Uh, no, no, no. I, I want to exit this. Sorry, I didn't mean to press that. Okay. Uh, I guess we're starting? I guess we're starting. Uh, let's get these guys. These guys should be over here, actually. And then these guys should come up here. And these guys should all uh, move up as well. <coughs> We basically want to get in range uh, of all these guys, and we want to be able to, yeah, let's see, we, we want these guys to probably come over here, or actually maybe just, maybe just right here. Okay, so the spearmen here. Okay, and we're going to... We're going to send our horsemen in to go attack through there. They will charge through there. The sky junk is just going to chill out here. Um, I am definitely open to playing this a little bit differently and uh, learning from what I'm doing. Uh, my horsemen go through and wreck these guys, I think. They do pretty well. Now, do I just leave the horsemen in there or do I just move them out and sort of pick them up and move them out and stuff. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, the Jade Warriors are going to come over here and attack those. The Celestial Dragon Guard is going to go get this guy. Where's my... Uh, you have some spells. So, Transformation of the Dragon. Uh, form offers powerful melee attacks and flight. And Wrath of the Storm. Uh, and it's Imbuement magical attacks. Okay, well, sounds good. Peasant long spearmen. They're all running away. That's fine. Uh, everybody seems to be running away. That's cool. Uh, where's my horse? Yeah, let's send them back in as well. To crash in again. 
yeah, so this is obviously a very easy, um, an easy victory for us. It doesn't, they don't really offer much in the way of, um, a fight, because this is the first thing. Okay, thank you. So, let's just get all of these guys to attack. And we can get in and go like this. Right on the banner there. Everybody attack them. These guys are run away, that's fine. Uh, we want these guys to run back as well. We can group our armies, by the way. Um, we can group, like, you know, all the melee together. Uh, we can press G and have, like, that. We can put all the... Uh, these guys together and then we can put the horse guys on one and then we can put our special units on one as well and this lets us just press like one two three four so we can pretty easily you know change which things we're working on um wrong lin all right all right let's, let's just kill this dude everybody relax um, it would be good to get our archers. Why, where are these guys? Uh... No, fire at them. Why, why are you running forward? This is one of those things where I'm not very good at. Uh... I think you guys can hear it, but I'm sure that it's not uh, amazing sound quality. So that's fine. I can't use this. Battle outcome is undecided. Oh, we 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 won, so we can't use that. Okay, we won, so we end the battle. And these guys had a decisive defeat. We won easily, didn't lose too much. Uh, we did really really well. Uh, we had, oh, are these all the guys that died? We lost 19 of these guys, 36 of these guys, 25 of these. Is that how that works? I guess so. That sucks. Yeah, 60 losses, but they lost 206. So now we got our victory. But what about the fate of those captured? Yeah, so we captured uh, 104 enemies, which means we can execute them, which gives us experience. We can venerate, which means we get the army replenished by 14%, or we can pardon the captives and get gold. I think we need an army right now, so I'm okay using the venerate thing. Oh, that was a cool... Uh, we went in and slapped that guy. So we got an astronomer. That's cool. Yeah, Lee Fan, you can come... Okay. You disband, save, rename. Uh, now can we move you? Okay. All right. Thank you. So, can you now move? Yes, you can move. Uh, this action can offer increase the parent army's chance of finding a magical item. Uh, I don't, I don't know what this means. What does that mean? I want to merge. Available actions. Right click to embed hero. Left click. So yeah, that's what I want to do. Right now you're embedded. Okay, good. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So he's an astronomer. This is our hero. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, Miao Ying. And they just joined each other right now. Okay. We have 500 gold we got. And we need to get to this uh, Mines of Namyang. Uh, so we're pretty much done there. We have a technology point that we can start, uh, I guess, doing. Uh, we are a ranged army. Let's keep that in mind. So we don't really want to go up this way yet. Um, the horseman units? Uh, no, I think 
I think the Fletchling Mentors is the way to go. This is going to give us um, more ammunition for all of our ranged units, which is really good for our ranged units, which we have a lot of. So our next job is to come over here and do this, but um, this button at the bottom here will basically tell you which actions you have left to take, um, basically what you can do. I'm gonna look at my building um, overview here. This gives me all of the things that I can build inside my, uh, my keep my whatever, um, city that you control here so in this case it's this Nangao uh, city um, so I can go into this building browser here and it just lets me in you know choose which things I want to research and which ones I want to um, work on so this gives us access to uh, the garrison uh, it moderately increases the health of settlement walls towers and gatehouses and improved tower projectile of bullets and it provides the garrison for uh, two jade warriors one jade warrior halberds jade warrior crossbowmen and peasant crossbowmen uh ramparts okay we can do archer platforms uh which you can garrison the crossbowmen um, so that's fine I, I don't think i want defense right now we probably want infrastructure or basic military here um, iron hail gunners. I, I like this. We have this already, though, it looks like. Um, resources, income generated, pottery resource production, 20 kilnful. I mean, the economy is one of those things that you, you need to work on. You know, you need to do that. Uh, conscription field. It is through the grace of Kuai Yin, the patron of archers, that the conscription, conscription fields of the Celestial Empire are full of keen trainees. So this gives us control to casualty replenishment rate plus 3% of the armies in the region. The casual casualty replenishment rate represents the proportion of a unit's base entities or health that can be restored each turn. It is capped at 50% of the unit's maximum health. So we can replenish 50% of a unit's, uh, I'm not sure if that's health or like the number of units you have in your uh, you know, base entities. I, I, I guess that's kind of the same thing. Um, but this just increases basically the the natural healing that your army gets, which is pretty good. 40% uh, less uh, cost for the peasant long spearmen and horsemen and archers. That's really good. And then it prevents the construction of the conscription office building. Oh, interesting. So you have to go either the conscription field or the conscription office office so this is uh two control and then it recruit rank plus two for peasant long spearmen peasant archers and peasant horsemen units so does that mean that they they are rank three when you get them so basically every time you recruit those units they become uh they rank up twice automatically you don't need the xp to to rank them up those i mean that i guess that's good sort of like tft it's like getting a two-star unit instead of a one-star unit maybe i don't know if the bonus is uh, that much but uh and then it prevents the construct conscription field i actually don't know which one's better so let's just look at what else we got spice market and where's market so this is income generated and this is uh income generated and then income from trade tariffs and minus one harmony this is plus one harmony and this is just straight income so there's no trade there i like that this is a tea parlor uh and then we can't do labor conscription here so basically this is three different sections we got to choose one of each um for these things so this is income from all buildings is plus two percent which is nice and growth plus ten percent this is growth plus ten and the construction cost is minus four I think the income, this is a good long-term thing because once you start getting a lot of buildings, that 2% will grow exponentially. Um, it will be really useful. Uh, this income generated is uh, 172 gold. Uh, this is 143 gold. And then the income from trade tariffs is 2%. I do like those. Um, uh, I don't know. I think the recruitment cost is really good, but the 
Plus two rank is also really good. I don't know what's better, to be perfectly honest. Um, let's let's take a look. Oh yeah, the defense we don't really need. Basic military we don't need. The resources are nice, but um, and it's only one turn. So you can see here, all of these here take one turn. So uh, at the next turn, we can you know basically do another one as well. Um, so yeah, this is Jade Warriors here. This is the basic military stuff. So Jade Warriors, Peasant Horsemen, uh, Iron Hair, Iron Hail Gunners, and the Clay Pit. I I think we just go for something infrastructure wise. I think that the income generated is probably the best thing. I like the Harmony plus one and not minus one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one there. Um, that seems pretty good to me. You can only build one thing at a time, I believe. So, and we don't have any other, um, we don't have any other settlements that we're working with. So, we're going to press OK on that. And I apologize if I'm going through this really slowly. I'm not going to do this for every single decision we make. But, the, you know, the first few times we have to do this, or the first time we do one of these things, I, I want to explain what we're doing. That's all. Um, so, recruit units and recruit regiments of renown. Instantly recruit elite units to your army. Regiments of renown have greatly improved Stats greatly improved. Okay, well, that sounds fun. We can't recruit these because uh, we we have to unlock them. But uh, I mean, that sounds cool. We don't want. We do want to recruit this. Global recruitment is only available whilst garrison in the encamp stance. Uh, does that mean we can't do this? We're gonna take these iron hail gunners. Okay, that's good. And now we end our turn. So that's turn one. There are... Is it 131 NPC... Oh my god. Okay, we uh, recruited two new units. And this gives us the Feather for feather Foe Torque. This is a pa passive ability. It is a hex in an area that gives 10%... Uh, 10 10 defense and 15 armor down for uh, affects units in range, but it affects units if flying unit. Okay, so this is this is just a something that is going to affect flying units only. Uh, that's totally fine. Well, we do have the ivory root, so this is the trade here. Uh, this is that caravan. So that's what they were talking about when they were talking about having caravans that were giving us some, um, uh, you know, 20% extra caravans or whatever that was. That's um, that's what that is there. Okay. Sounds cool. We'll take that feather fellow torque. No, you're, you're correct. Okay. Cleanse the mines. This is the next mission. Uh, the reward is 750 treasury, and then the terrifying Mask of E. <clears throat> All right. Sounds good. I will take this. Why I can't move, by the way. Uh, why I can't move. Uh, I guess I have to press that first. Okay, so now I can move. So now we're going to be attacking this mines. Um, it's a it's an auto resolve outcome. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so we can encircle them, which would basically starve them out, or we can uh, auto resolve it. Um, I I think I'm just going to automatically resolve. I don't really want to encircle it. It's going to take longer that way. I think we will just. You know, do that. Um, we lost 148 units, which sucks, uh, but that's okay. It's fine. We got an Iron Curse icon, which gives us missile resistance, which is kind of cool. It's an enchanted item, so there's there's items that you get. Okay, so <sighs> yes, I know. So now that we've captured this settlement, we can go ahead and decide what to do with it. So if we sack it, we we lose control over, or there's a control penalty that will be applied to the province, deteriorating at one point per turn. So for the next 10 turns, there will be province instability, which isn't great if we sack it. 
if we loot it and we occupy it, we're going to get uh, a conquest penalty of 30, which seems crazy. Instability here, but we claim the riches for itself. We can raise it. Uh, we basically just uh, destroy it, but the previous owners will like you a lot less. Occupying the settlement will provide some instability and a conquest penalty. So I don't, I don't really know what you're supposed to do here. They're all, they all have ups and downs. Um, hmm. Control is greatly reduced, and your diplomatic relations with the previous owner also suffer greatly. I actually don't care if they don't like us, because that was like the rebels. So we're going to go ahead and just take that. We are going to take that. Uh, merchant caravans, no, I don't want that. Okay. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to go back to this building browser. We're going to pick what we want to build. Uh, this is the gunpowder road where, uh, what were we? Select next. Nope. Gunpowder road. How come we can't pick things? Repair. Oh, I see. It's damaged. That's why the stables is damaged. Aha. Gotcha. So we could get these merchant caravans, which provides 200 income um, and then harmony. So we'll go ahead and do that. That sounds great. Uh, let's go back to our other settlement over here. And, uh, oh, that's what we were doing, I guess. We don't have two buildings? I thought we had this settlement as well. Maybe this settlement can't do anything yet this is uh, the mines of Nanyang oh here it is it's on this side okay well these we have to repair these it costs 229 we do have 10,000 gold and we're getting 3200 every turn so I feel like it's probably okay to repair these guys uh, we don't need anything there or there um, yeah, we have a, okay, so our Lord leveled up, you can see that, uh, Miao Ying and Li Fan are both leveled up to two, so it, this is sort of like their skill points that we're, um, that we're attributing here as well. Um, before we do this, I want to probably go into here, look at the... Uh, look at the enchanted items we have and see what we can do. So we have the Swordmaster uh, that is um, an ancillary uh, given to us as well. We also have some magic items. So we have this Iron Curse icon. We have the Terrifying Mask of E. And we have a Feather for feather Foe Torque. Um... So, I guess we have to choose the enchanted item, right? Missile resistance, uh, attribute causes fear, and causes terror. I think that's pretty good. I think we should do that. Um, let's go over to the other one here, Leaf Fan. And uh, I guess we put this on just for the uh, missile resistance. I think that's totally fine. Uh, and then the skills. Let's look at the skills. So first is the Lay Fan, which is like our secondary unit here. Uh, we could do Harmonic Convergence, uh, Divining Auspicious Signs. The caster guides the minds of targets, augmenting them with the foresight needed for victory. Uh, overcast Spell, harmoni Harmonic Convergence. All right. Spell, Lore of Heavens, Armor, Melee Defense, Melee Attack. So these are like support stuff, basically. Uh, hero actions, hero cost, block, army, uh, movement range is modified by an additional minus 3%, okay, I don't know what all this is, a 5% chance of wounding a target, uh, research rate is increased by 3%, and then control, I, I think we just put this, uh, harmonic convergence on, I think that's probably the way to go, um, Aura of Majesty. That sounds pretty cool. Root Marcher. This gives us a uh, slightly higher movement range. The Inspiring Presence. Uh, unit experience gains per turn is 75. And then the character's order, Aura Leadership Effect is plus 5. That's actually pretty good. Uh, the Earthblood Spell is a heal per second 
a 200 meter range in an AoE of 35 meters that affects allies in range, but only max four. Now, does that mean four? That must be four like regimens, right? Not like four actual units, I assume. Uh, I'm not really sure. I think, honestly, I'm going to probably take the Inspiring Presence just because it gives us the unit's experience per turn of 75. I feel like that's probably worth it, uh, to be honest. So, let's save this. Uh, we got this. We got that terrifying mask. Yep, bring the entire province back under your control, which is what we're going to do. This is Hao Tao over here. We're going to go get him next. Do we do this technology? Yeah, we got this. Uh, Fletching Mentors. This is three star or three um, turns to get this. This is the ammunition, right? I, th this must be the best one. Is this the one we're still... Yeah, we're still on that one. Okay, so that's three more turns for that. Good. Let's keep going. We're going to get this province, and then that'll be probably the end of the first episode. It's been about an hour, uh, 50 minutes so far, so we'll do this next uh, turn, get this thing, and then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll move on. So, Biting Blade. The jagged edge of this Biting Blade ensures that even the strongest armor struggles to repel this weapon. Armor-piercing weapon damage plus 45. Nice. Capture and occupy the Snake Gate. Okay. Oh. Yes, I would love to do that. Faction destroyed the Redhorn tribe. Wow, they were destroyed. All right then. Okay then, let's uh, let's move on. So, we need to take our army, and we need to go to here. We can basically run to over here. Can I? Uh, how do I? Uh, Oops, no, 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 no. Oh my gosh, I moved by accident. Oh no, did I use my movement there? Oh, that sucks. Okay, we, we'll end the turn and we'll do that again. I accident. I was trying to move the camera and I moved my whole dude. So you, you want to be really careful, I think, in this game about like just randomly uh, ending your turns. Um, yeah, because you actually end up... Um, Oh, Razor Standard is nice. Uh, you actually end up... Your enemies use those turns as well. Um, and so if you... How do I say? If you if you end your turn and you don't do something that you maybe you didn't make the best use of it like I did there, your enemies will get stronger because they use their turn and the, the computer keeps track of all these things. So it's not like the enemies are sort of static until you meet them. I believe, and, and someone can tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe if you use a bunch of turns and you just, you know, you just, you know, skip everything and take turns and skip everything and end your turns over and over and over again, uh, the enemies will, you know, they will kill each other off. That's why that faction died. They will, um, they will get stronger. They will be researching. They'll have more units. They'll have bigger armies. I, I do believe that's the way it works. I don't, I don't know if it's the way it works in this storyline because maybe this is a little bit more guided and so factions are sort of, you know, frozen in place until you meet them or you attack them or something. But I, I don't think so. I think the way this works is that as you as you end your turns, the you know, the other uh, the other armies in the world will will continue to uh, oh, I can't do that. Uh, yeah, the other armies will continue to grow. So we can't actually do anything. We can't actually recruit units here, which sucks. But we can go here. And we can go... This is a close victory. Hmm. We have medium casualties. I don't like that very much. Huh. I think we have to do it. We'll just auto-resolve it. Uh, I don't feel great, but... We will lose some units. Okay, so we lost our cavalry. That really sucks. But we didn't lose anybody else. So that's okay. We got 93 kills. Oh, that's the kills that you got. I see. So who got the most kills? This one. Damage Delta's gold value. Interesting. 
Okay, we got a scroll of leeching. Okay, the tattered and stained scroll should not be held in one's hand for long as it steals all manner of essence, including magical power, experience, 1900 experience, and 1200 gold. 1298 gold, that's great. Uh, loot and occupy. We will loot and occupy because uh, we don't care how... We don't care that those guys don't like us. This gives us the Quicksilver armor. I do believe this stuff uh, will naturally be moved onto your your heroes yeah i know repair our stuff i know we'll repair that we'll repair that uh that looks great what else can we do here i want to merchant caravans is done uh gem factors we could do that and we can't quite upgrade to a town yet but we can go here to the building you can see here the gunpowder road uh yeah we can this is still one to to uh to to rebuild those you can see our control is going down um corruption is not uh, a thing yet uh then we don't want to demolish we don't want to abandon uh we just let this go we have unused Skill points. Well, we have two here because we leveled up twice, actually. Uh, sure aim. Missile strength, plus 6%. Eastern fires. Ammunition, plus 5% for hail gunners, crane gunners, grand canyon, fire rain. Okay. Uh, mighty charge, stone gaze, and sky fire. For sky lanterns. Okay. I think I'm going to go the sure aim because that gives us... Uh, more damage on our missile strength, which is obviously very, very good. Roiling Skies. This is a hex, which gives you 25% less movement speed and 20% melee defense. It, if it's flying, triggers when casting a spell. So this is a passive ability. Okay, so um, another flying unit thing. I, I guess that's fine. Wind Blast. What's this? This is a just a damage spelled. Uh, not on or below a platform. Okay. Expanding tier-shaped attack. Strong versus multiple units. Sounds good to me. Rannon's Thunderbolt. Uh, this is a range damage of 672. This one is... Uh, sorry, what was Wind Blast again? This one was... Oh my god, this is really hard to... Uh, 16 damage per second for two seconds. So that actually is not not that great. Curse of the Midnight Wind. What's this? A hex on all enemies in range of melee attack and armor. Okay, interesting. That's actually pretty good. Or we just get a spell that just does insane damage. So 672 range damage plus explosive damage of 96. Good against armor, good against artillery pieces, strong versus multiple combatants. I feel like that that seems pretty good. I think I'm going to take that for sure. Okay, we will check that. Uh, this is what we need to do here. What do we need to do here? Uh, yeah, we did this. Scroll of leeching. Yep, we did that. Follower gained. A sword master. Upkeep. Minus eight for Jade Warriors and Jade Warrior halibred. Halibreds. Good. Uh, Quicksilver armor. Faction destroyed. Rebels of... Uh, Rebel Lords of Nanyang. Yes, I destroyed them. They are dead. I'm very happy about that. Uh, resolve. Commandment available. What is a commandment? Uh, I don't see any icons down here that we can do anything with. Uh, what, what commandment are we doing, friends? Jade Addict. Uh, oh, is this a commandment here? Oh, yeah, this is the commandments. Okay, issue commandments across the province to help control local areas. Okay, income from ta trade tariffs, uh, recruitment costs, and local recruitment capacity plus one. Uh, melee defense campaign movement range is minus 20 for enemy ar armies starting their turn in this region. 
Enemy urban in province. That's nothing. Research rate plus seven percent. I I kind of like the research rate. Let's do that. Why not? Uh, commandments compass selection available. Oh, what the hell is this? The Wujing compass harnesses the winds of magic to bring prosperity to Grand Cathay. Direct the compass fills the respective energy reserve. The greater the energy reserve, the larger the benefits are. However, the energy reserve the reserve of all directions will decay over time. Okay, so you have to basically pick a direction that you want this compass to be in, and it will, uh, yeah, it will move. Okay, so Celestial Lake. This gives us two control, minus two corruption, defensive supplies, casualty replenishment, weight, and this set value of cargo. I mean, I think this is pretty good, right? Uh, defensive supplies is pretty good and then casualty replenishment rate does this only apply uh, nope but if it's all regions within Cathay and all regions owned by Cathayan factions outside its borders that's pretty good control plus two though is pretty good as well active wind direction is set income from all buildings chance of wind magic increasing great bastion recruitment costs uh, ancestral war summon unit oh this is pretty cool summons a unit of ancestral warriors summoned units degrade over time a 10 second duration and 120 second cooldown though Ugh, I think we just go for celestial lake here I think we just do this we'll, we'll set our compass in that direction I don't really know what the compass does but uh, I guess that's that's what it does all right guys it's been now one hour one minute we're going to stop here i know this was a very long video uh and it was a lot of stuff that we went through but that's sort of how this first video is going to be from here on in i'm going to go a little bit quicker i will focus a little bit more on some of the battles that i think are going to be fun to watch um and we're going to try and go a little bit quicker without explaining every single thing but honestly, I'm not really explaining it. I'm I'm trying to figure out what this is. I it's not really explaining it because I I need to know what I'm doing. This is not necessarily for you. This is mostly for me trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So I appreciate you guys if you've made it this far. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I apologize if this was a little bit slower. I'm hoping that some people are just enjoying my sultry voice and they're going to sleep and they don't care what I'm talking about. Um, I've heard that uh, several times, so I appreciate that. If you feel that way, that's awesome. Put this on when you're going to sleep and I promise I'm not the yelling, screaming, cursing, going insane kind of streamer. I'm the chill out, dicking around kind of tuber and uh, lots of people like that. So thank you very much for watching. I want to thank my uh, sponsor, CPU Cores. You can see their little thing in the bottom left here they've been great to me um they help your computer go faster uh and uh they're a great sponsor so thank you so much to them you can go download them on cpucores.com or just straight on steam where you can get most other stuff they're right there they have a new update that's coming out for free it will update your old version as far as i know uh so that's really cool and as soon as that happens i will be sure to let you guys know and uh, i think they're going to do like a discount code or something as well so hoping for that Anyway, thank you very much. This has been the first video of our Cathay campaign for Warhammer 3, Total War 3. And I'm having fun. I think this uh, I think this could be kind of interesting. Uh, hopefully we don't die immediately. Obviously, this was just the first few turns and a lot of explaining about what we're doing. Um, so in the next video, we'll go a lot quicker and we'll start getting into some of the meat of this campaign. Thanks very much again, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.